I will not vote for anything, though, which puts restrictions on the president. I'm not going to vote for any legislation that says that we cannot use ground troops. That, to me, takes away the constitutional right of the commander-in-chief, and no president should want to give up that right. Once we do that, we're just, to me, acknowledging ultimate defeat. And we welcome you into America's Forum on this Wednesday morning. That was Congressman Peter King speaking to CNN about uh, what will help determine his vote on the president's request to reauthorize the use of the military against ISIS. Let's take another view from the Hill, and we get it this morning from our old friend, Congressman Walter B. Jones of North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Jones is a member of the House Committee on Armed Services, and he checks in live from Newsmax, Washington. So, Walter, that draft from the White House was sent to Congress this morning, and we just heard Peter King say he will not vote for a plan that would limit the options of the Commander-in-Chief. What is your stance on this? Well, <clears throat> J.D., I'm opposed to putting ground troops uh, in uh, Iraq or any of the Middle East countries until the Middle East countries start sending their troops first. Uh, you and I both know that our country is in deep, deep trouble. Yes, I want to fight ISIS. They are evil, they're barbaric, and they need to be eliminated. However, how can we continue to borrow money from foreign governments to pay to fight these wars around the world? We need to start paying for this. And I'm not an advocate of taxes, but I will tell you this. Our country cannot continue to go down this road or we won't even be able to afford to pay those in the military. We're spending, J.D., about $300,000 an hour to drop bombs. Walter, even as you document the financial cost, there has been a human cost to our involvement or at least the presence of Americans in the Mideast. Yesterday, the, uh, the confirmation of the death of Kayla Mueller, a young woman from Prescott, Arizona, who was held captive in Syria. Now, Jordan reacted quite differently when that Jordanian pilot was burned alive. Are you concerned that even when we do use our military, it's tantamount to just going through the motions? J.D., uh, let me say again that the whole problem is, is a complex, very difficult problem. I've said on your show before, we made a horrible mistake of taking, down, taking out Saddam. Uh, he knew his country better than we know his country. And I will say this, we've got to be careful with our foreign policy. And we've got to have an end to whatever our goals are of what we're trying to achieve. We cannot continue to go 10 more years, 20 more years. And I, that's why I say I want these other Middle East countries to commit their troops, then let us commit our troops. I'm opposed to anything that would give the President the authority to go in there and commit our ground troops. As far as I'm concerned, they say that the AUMF that he's offering says it should be a three-year than a sunset. I want to see a review once a year if we make this commitment. So, uh, to get this done, you need to have an annual review of what the Commander-in-Chief is doing so there is some congressional oversight. And Walter, time and again, you have spoken eloquently about uh, the human cost, not only to those in uniforms, but to people like Kayla Mueller. Uh, let, let's bring it back to another prisoner swap, that one involving Bo Bergdahl. Florida Senator Marco Rubio said that that set a very bad precedent and it put more American lives in danger. Let's listen to Senator Rubio, then I'll get your reaction. We said at the time that that swap in and of itself would now put a price tag on the head of every American abroad. And in fact, ISIL, even as we speak, is actively looking for more Westerners to kidnap, particularly Americans. Senator Rubio there speaking to uh, the Fox News Channel. Walter, this whole situation, does it boil down, and I understand there's concern about committing American lives and treasure to any military action abroad, but what about, and there's no way to, to dodge it, the competence of the current commander-in-chief. When you take a look at the swap of Bo Bergdahl for the Taliban Five, uh, when it comes to a matter of trust, I just have to ask it this way. Do you trust our current commander-in-chief to make the right decisions? Well, I think the swap was wrong. I think it should have been one for one, but not five for one. I thought that was a bad mistake. My point is that I, I believe sincerely that we in Congress have not interjected ourselves as much as we should as it relates to our constitutional responsibilities. That's why I said 
I am going to try to offer an amendment if I get a chance to. There's no guarantee I will. But if I get a chance to, to say that the president will have to come back to Congress once a year and also give a report to the American people. And uh, mindful of that, Walter, uh, we are going to come back in a few minutes because we want to take more time to talk to you about the proper role and projection of American force and the paradox of those who may advocate using force abroad but fail to really move to strengthen our borders at home. All that and more ahead with Congressman Walter B. Jones as we continue here on America's Forum. Welcome back to America's Forum. North Carolina Congressman Walter Jones has made clear his concerns about authorizing force against ISIS. He says he wants to see annual scrutiny and he'll try to offer an amendment of that type. But let's continue our conversation now with the good gentleman representing North Carolina in Washington. Our view from the Hill continues as Walter Jones joins us live from Newsmax in Washington. This whole question of funding for the Department of Homeland Security, where the president has moved forward with an unconstitutional amnesty, executive amnesty, Walter. Uh, I got to tell you, over in the Senate, it seemed that the leadership there waved the white flag yesterday, acknowledging they won't be able to overcome Democrat filibusters uh, the Democrats not willing to join in to fund Homeland Security independent of immigration policy on the Homeland Security spending bill. Walter, what do you think is next in that regard? J.D., I, I don't know. The Senate is hard to understand. And I, I would tell you that I said on your show and many other shows before this that we have a constitutional duty to ensure that whomever is the president of the United States, that he or she as president of the United States upholds the Constitution. And I said that when John Boehner, when Mr. Obama made this presidential order, I said, why don't we follow the Constitution? In the Constitution, articles of impeachment. I'm sorry, and a lot of people, I don't like the idea of impeaching anyone. But for goodness sakes, when you make those kind of, uh, of executive uh, decisions to the detriment of our country of telling people who came here illegally you're now legal because I just signed an order that I mean that's why we're in the, the situation we're in now and uh, we, we don't follow the Constitution mindful of that the frustration uh, is rife in the Republican Senate ranks uh, Mark Kirk of Illinois uh, said this of his counterparts across the aisle in the Democrat Party uh, quoting now from Politico, the Republicans, if there is a successful attack during a Department of Homeland Security shutdown, we should build a number of coffins outside each Democratic office and say, you are responsible for these dead Americans. Now, Walter Jones, we note, given the fact that you have so many military personnel living in your congressional district, you have down the hall outside your office pictures of the fallen in the United States but this level of frustration is palpable there on Capitol Hill, is it not? Well, there is a great deal of frustration because, again, uh, I want to go back very quickly to the House. Uh, Mr. Boehner, the Speaker of the House, said that what he wanted to do was go to the federal courts and sue Mr. Obama over his executive decision. I, I said at the time I was one of four or five Republicans that voted against giving Mr. Boehner that authority. It passed without my vote. But I said, why do we need to go to the federal courts and spend three to four million dollars and then have a federal judge to, to throw out the suit? Why not follow the Constitution? And again, it comes down to funding. But Walter, it seems the, the tactic being utilized where We'll fund everything except Homeland Security and then fight it there when immigration is a part of that. And then to have the Democrat filibusters from Harry Reid and that crowd, uh, it, is, um, it seems to be almost an unsolvable problem because you do have the prospect of, uh, of attack. And uh, your North Carolina colleague, Richard Burr, who chairs the Senate Intelligence Committee, was quoted as saying that personally he is concern now he hasn't had the same level of concern about an attack in the United States since 
what we saw back on 9-11, to paraphrase his comments, do you share that type of concern about a domestic attack? J.D., I am concerned. I would not be surprised if there was some bomber in uh, eastern North Carolina, where I'm from, in a shopping mall that blew himself up. And, and we all know we live in that kind of world today. My, what I think will happen is, as you've been up here before as a member of Congress, they'll pass a CR at some point in time and continue to fund uh, the Homeland Security needs uh, for, I don't know if it'll be 30 days or 90 days, but that's the way it'll probably work itself out, to be honest with you. And uh, in the minute that remains, part of that prospect will be funding not only for Homeland Security, but the funds that will go into Mr. Obama's unconstitutional de facto amnesty, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. J.D., you know this. You swore to uphold the Constitution. All members of Congress, House and Senate, do the same thing. We have forgotten the Constitution. And on that somber note, we thank you, Congressman Walter Jones, and we will continue to seek your wisdom and counsel and your perspective you. with these views from the Hill. Thank you so much for joining us today thank from you. Newsmax Washington and keep us posted on developments there, won't you? Thank Walter you. Jones of North Carolina. When we come back, Professor Robert Rabiel kind of have a classroom over the air to talk about what is at stake and what's going on now in the Middle East. That's next. As